Hi, I'm Tom Soulsby. I'm the assistant horticulturalist in charge of the Heritage Garden here at the Chicago Botanic Garden. And today we're going to be talking about all of our troughs uh, that we have uh, put out. A lot of things happen uh, behind the scenes and early in the mornings that you don't uh, often get to see. Uh, but the 65 troughs that we've installed in the Heritage Garden for our spring display are one of the many examples of things um, that happen that make the garden a great experience for you. Um, a lot of the work that you see here in the Heritage Garden actually begins um, deep in the heart of winter. Uh, the containers that we make, uh, the troughs, are made from concrete, perlite, and uh, peat moss. And it takes a, a several weeks of our winter to put these together. Um, when they're brought out here in the spring, uh, we fill them with a lightweight potting soil uh, that helps with drainage. There's also holes in the bottom that also help uh, the extra water drain out. Um, also in the winter, we're spending a lot of our time growing the plants that actually get put into this particular display. Uh, we have about 10 different kinds of plants that we put in here. Uh, about 18 to 20 total plants get put into each particular trough. We have three different kinds of tulips that we plant in the display, and they're all forced over winter in our uh, production greenhouses. Uh, there's an early, a late, and a mid-season tulip that we put into our display. I like to uh, plant the tulips by leaving them in the pots, and that helps um, so that the tulips don't get overwatered and, um, and rot. We do water these quite a bit because there are flowering annuals in there. Um, leaving tulips in the pot, however, keeps the bulb um, from getting too much water and rotting uh, before it puts on its incredible shelf. So we dig a hole, and we just start by getting all of the, the tulips uh, placed in a random order. Um, there's no particular design per se. We want to make them all look, all the troughs look a little bit different. Um, we want them to all look sort of natural. Then we randomly take different plants, um, annual flowering plants that we have selected for our display, and um, we plant them in things that, in a way that you think will look good. Spring is a very short growing season. And so there's not a lot of time for plants to fill out. So what we try to do is pack as many plants as we possibly can uh, into a trough so it, is, it gets as full as we possibly can get it as soon as we possibly can get it. Um, all of the plants that we have selected are grown for the cool weather that we have in the spring. Um, although this morning we had a very cold and frosty morning and so um, we did cover a lot of uh, our plants that we had planted yesterday. Um, they're cold tolerant, but they're not quite that cold tolerant. So, and as you can see, I'm not picking, I'm just kind of randomly finding an empty spot. Um, and I'm putting a flower in, fill the space. Um, there are some flowers, for example, um, this Nemophila. Um, it's a shorter plant, so it's probably better to put a shorter plant um, up near the front. It also has um, a habit which is more uh, conducive to flopping and sort of softening the edge of the trough um, from the front. But with that said, there's no rules on that you have to put it up in the front. It really depends on um, what your own personal tastes and style might be. Um, some plants, like this uh, playa or tidy tip, actually um, gets quite large and tall and maybe a little bushy towards the end of the, the spring season and that's something more conducive to putting towards the back of the container. These are violas and they're always a springtime favorite. A little bit shorter so plan, it's something that we would want to put close to an edge or maybe you know bleed in a little bit from the side just to sort of make a natural transition between plants. This is an annual phlox, um, and when you come back to the garden in a couple of weeks, you'll see some wonderful flowers. Uh, this is uh, the start of a flower for the annual phlox right here, um, white with a little bluish purple center to it. These are lupins, um, another nice uh, plant with a blue flower, but a very different, um, a very different habit to it. Uh, sort of more upright, sort of more leafy, uh, a different kind of leaf than we've seen so far uh, in our planting. The most interesting containers are varied in height, textures, colors, and so on. Uh, we plant things fairly tight and fairly close um, because we want them to fill in and look fabulous in a very short period of time. Uh, this plant here, we haven't talked about yet, is called uh, Lenaria, or commonly known as toad flax, um, and it is a wonderful little uh, white flower. Um, 
very much a different uh, leaf structure than we've seen already. And as you can see, it sort of has a hat. It's going to sort of bushy. It's going to get a little leggy. It might flop over the side uh, a little as bit. As it grows, so, you know, so again, to soften up uh, the edge that we've been talking about. And we will put our last couple of plants in here. And we will have one complete crop. And there you have it. Uh, we have one completed trough. As I mentioned, a lot of the plants that we put in uh, into our containers this year um, are all spring cold tolerant plants. However, there are limits to that. Um, last night was a very cold night. We got a heavy frost. Uh, it was in the uh, mid to low 30s. And so to protect our display, we put a frost blanket on them. And I would recommend that you do that at home. Um, even if it, it isn't, you're not sure that it's going to get too cold, um, it's still highly recommended that you put something on it. You've made a big investment uh, in a trough or a container at your home, so it's very important to make sure that um, you protect that investment. So we buy basically a, uh, a white, uh, breathable fabric cloth. Um, moisture can go through. Um, it keeps um, the temperature of the trough from the day before a little bit warmer, but more importantly, it keeps uh, the frost off for the most part. Um, you can use any kind of material really um, to cover your trough. You can use anything from sort of a formal garden cloth to a piece of plastic to even um, a garbage bag. I mean there's no limits to what you might be able to put on. The key is just to keep the frost off. So we put the frost cover on last night before we went home. Um, we did get the heavy frost that we expected and for the most part it kept our plants protected. They will get a little um, matted down when you put your frost blanket on. Um, but that's okay, they will perk up just nicely. Once the sun comes out, um, once it warms up a little bit, uh, they will perk up a little bit. You might see a few leaves um, that might not make it. They might get a little brown or damaged or yellow. Um, but don't touch them right away. Take off your frost blanket. Um, don't touch the leaves and let them sort of warm up naturally. Um, if, you, if you tend to play with them, while they're still a little cold or a little frozen, you can actually do more damage to them than if you just leave them alone for uh, a couple hours.